Okay. <laughs> We're back. Thank you for being patient. And thank you all for coming to see me. Yeah. I appreciate it. So thank you for coming to what is a case study on the how and the why of shutting down your blog. Um, my name is Mike Wojcik, or as I'm sometimes referred to as Alfred the Butler. The Michael Caine version, not the, uh, you know, Batman Forever and all that stuff. So just uh, those of you um, uh, that, that, first of all, how many of you were readers of the Burt blog when it shut down? Okay. How many of you uh, are readers of That's Church now? So, awesome. Okay. So, um... My background is I, I've been involved in social media here in Pittsburgh for a number of years. I uh, uh, was involved in founding uh, with a, a great team, uh, Pittsburgh Bloggers. And uh, through that and some other things that I was doing, I actually met our other very special guest who I don't believe needs any sort of introduction, but I will try to do so. <laughs> so it is, it is my honor and privilege to, to introduce to you my good friend Virginia Montanez of thatschurch.com. Uh, my name is, he says, Virginia Montanez, and uh, you can call me Jenny, though. Uh, I know it gets confusing. I have so many names now, but um, Jenny is good for me. Uh, I do want to start off. I, I tweeted this yesterday, and I'm sure some of you are wondering what my big secret is. And um, did anybody get that tweet where I said I was going to reveal a secret today? I'm wondering <laughs> what it is. How many of you have talked to me so far in person? How many of you that have talked to me were able to understand and tell that I'm mostly deaf? Two. Okay. That is my secret, and it's why I'm so shy, it's why I write, I keep to myself, it's why I am the way I am, I'm, I'm not normally as outgoing as people would think I should be. I, I can hear you, I can hear when you're talking to me, but I don't want you to think I'm rude, and Mike is going to have to repeat any question that you ask from the audience, there is no way, maybe like these two right here, I'm going to get it. If you ask me a question from two rows back, I'm not going to understand what you've asked me, so Mike is going to have to repeat it. Uh, into the microphone, so just to make sure that I understand what you guys did. You guys know because you saw my hearing aids, or could you just tell saying here's something? Okay, I was just kidding. I saw the hearing aid when we were there. Okay, they came to the restaurant, these two readers, and that's how I met them. And I had my hair up that day, and um, so if my hair was up, you would see that I wear two very powerful hearing aids. And without them, I'd probably hear maybe five, ten percent. Uh, with them, I probably maybe hear 70 or 80 of what you guys are hearing. So it's why I'm not being rude. If you if you called to me in the hall, I didn't hear you. <laughs> um, that's, what, that's why I wanted to get out of the way first. I, I, it's not something I advertise. It's not something I talk about. But I felt it's like, Mike, you know what? Um, in this instance, there's no way I'm going to get through this without explaining to these people why I am the way I am. So now that that's out of the way, my background is marketing and communications. I've been a communications director for nonprofits about 10 years now, um, currently unemployed, as you guys know, um, which is fine. I'm actually enjoying it a little bit. I think uh, come January is when I'll start really getting back into the swing of things. Um, but that's my background, and I, do you want me to talk about, to explain why I started the blog, or? We'll get into that. All right, second. then I'm going to stop talking and let Mike take over. So, <laughs> so, you know, one of the questions, one of the questions that you, you know, that we talk about at PodCamp, of course, is, you know, the inspiration for starting a blog, how to keep things going, you know, what are the things that can inspire you to write. But, you know, quite honestly, just like all things must come to an end, there comes a point in time where you're like, you know what, I really, I think I really want to stop, you know, and I need to stop blogging. So why would you want to stop in the first place? Well, one of the first reasons is, is that you just have a ton of stuff going on, either from a time standpoint or just, you know, personal life has changed, you have a child, you have new work responsibilities. It's just not something that you're you know, really comfortable or really able to donate that much time to. Second is writer's block. <laughs> so you may have some serious problems coming up with content. You find yourself putting off the, that post that you were supposed to do today. You're going to put it off to tomorrow. You're going to put it off to the next day. And so on and so forth. And then the next thing you know, two months later, you, you, know, you have one post over the course of you know, 60 days, so, which can be a problem. So, 
And then finally, you got somebody that actually comes in and says they're going to shut down your protection rate and totally turn your blog off, just like Walter Peck does in Ghostbusters. So, which is kind of the setup for our case study today. It's a rare circumstance, but it is a circumstance that you could actually encounter, not just necessarily because you're writing an anonymous blog, but your employer comes to you and says, hey, you know, we've actually changed our blogging policy. In order to stay employed, you're going to have to shut it down, which they're, you know, per they, they're within their rights to do. So we're going to talk through the case study, and I'm going to let Jenny talk about kind of the very beginning of the Bird blog and how it came about, and we'll, we'll kind of go back and forth. And also, I mean, we want to keep this really, you know, casual. So if you have any questions or anything, just make sure to raise your hand and make sure to speak up. So which I still won't hear, but it won't matter. <laughs> Speak up, but I won't hear it. Um, okay, I started my blog, I think a lot of you probably know this, but I, I, as a communications person for a nonprofit, you're required to read a lot. I was reading the newspaper cover to cover every day. So many things I want to talk about, and I would sit down with my sisters, and they're just like, yeah, I don't give a crap about Dan Honorado. <laughs> so I was like, and my, my cousin um, had started like a little family blog, so I just decided to see what it was about somehow stumbled on Mike's Pittsburgh Bloggers, I don't even remember how, maybe like a week after. Um, but it was just my way of talking about Pittsburgh news. That's really all it was about the sports teams, about what I was reading in the newspaper, what I wanted to talk about. Very slow, well I think it was a slow start. Yeah. I mean, 12 readers, you know, watching the numbers <laughs> inch up here and there. Um, and, but it was just something that I really took to, as I said, it let me say what I wanted to say without having to talk to someone. So you understand what I'm doing is trying to avoid people, which is why I've been saying all along, when I knew I was coming out, I was stepping out of my comfort zone. Um, getting in front of people, talking face to face, is what I was avoiding with my blog, being able to say exactly what I wanted to say without getting in front of somebody. Um, but that's really why I started it. It was just, oh my God, on a whim one day. I have no idea what made me do it other than wanting to talk about things. So. Um, that good? You and, that's, well, and then I was going to say, probably about you know, three months later, I. I, I because I was the administrator of the Pittsburgh Bloggers website, I would see all the new submissions that would come in, and I would go in and make sure that they were from Pittsburgh and that they were writing, you know, that they weren't, you know, some sort of spam blog or some sort of, you know, just, you know, nonsense website. So I would go in and visit all of them. And back then, I mean, we had, um, you know, we were in the low, like, 200s, I think, or 300. So I actually, I still at that point could still pretty much tell you which, which ones were which and which, what specific blog was about what. And when I got Ginny's submission, I, I started reading it, and, and you know, instead of you know, some of the blogs I would go to once, and I it just it wasn't something that interested me. I was hooked right away, so I started commenting, and I was you know, probably the tenth or eleventh commenter, yeah. and then I was in the midst of also trying to start up a blog that I had, which eventually became my personal blog, which is called Have a Good Sandwich. And the premise was, it was an interview blog that was always going to be done over a sandwich at some restaurant in Pittsburgh. It was a great way for me to sample every single sandwich I could get my hands on. <laughs> but also, more importantly, meet very interesting people who I thought were really doing some cool things. So the first uh, the first guest on it was my friend who was also, uh, ironically enough, so it seems like I had this, you know, crazy obsession with an anonymous blogger. She was an anonymous blogger at the time. Um, and she was, I mean, she, but really was just writing it personally, not writing it for, for even public consumption. And I interviewed her and she had a, she was doing an interest in career change in the nursing. So I, on, a, on a complete flyer, I sent Ginny an email and I said, would you be interested in meeting me for lunch? I'd love to interview you for this, for this blog. And I didn't even think that, you know, there was a chance she was gonna probably say yes because she was very adamant even at the very beginning that her anonymity was so important. And I think at that point I had deduced that I thought you were married at the time. But, and I, I just assumed it. I thought that's what it was. And you, I think you referred to a relationship, so. Right. So she sends an email back. She goes, well, uh, maybe. She goes like, what's the context of it and all this. So I sent some more information. I even offered that we would do it online. And then she shoots back. She's like, yeah, sure. Just name the place or the time. So. We got off to a great start. I went the wrong day, and I was sitting there waiting for nobody that showed up. So I got back, and it was a miscommunication. We, next Monday was a different next Monday for her than it was for me. So, so we did the first interview, and it was, um, it was, you know, it was about 40, 45 minutes, and it was, it was just really fascinating to hear, you know, her background and the motivations for all the writing, which all, well, I would say, is all basically the same. And, and at that point. Um, I knew some information about her, but not all. I mean, one of the things that's really funny is, is, is I, you know, purposely didn't want to know her name so that when somebody would ask me, I wasn't going to lie to them. 
I mean, I didn't want to lie to anybody. You know, when somebody would say, you know who she is? I'm like, no, I don't. I, I, honest to God, I don't. And for a year and a half, I didn't know her first name. So we would have lunch, and I would not call her anything. <laughs> I would just sit down, and we wouldn't and say anything. I would be anything. paying, and I would be signing my card, like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I also wouldn't be necessarily looking over there either. So, so at that point, the blog was really getting started. And then, I mean, to start to talk about, like, kind of the trajectory and how things really started you know, getting crazy and the anonymity became more and more of an issue. Right. Um, I, I think, um, I don't know, I, I think Mike had a lot to do with me gaining the, this, I don't even know, the status of this secret mysterious. It wasn't what I was trying to do. I wasn't trying to become some sort of superhero thing. Um, but then Mike just was like, yes, we're going to do this. And you know, he came up with that, um, that so the first silhouette. Yeah. Right, and I think that's really what made people think, you know, who's behind the silhouette. Um, so I, I really think a part of the reason the blog became so popular was that mysteriousness. Um, so uh, that helped it grow and grow and grow. <coughs> Just various things. The Post Gazette started picking up on some things. Um, so readership starts going through the roof. People start saying, uh, Leo, I think you said it one time, you were at a bar, mm -hmm. and I mentioned you on the blog, and some girl was like, you were on the blog or something. Yeah. When I would hear <laughs> things like that, it would just astound me uh, <laughs> to understand the impact that I was having on just, a, I mean, not the whole city by any means, but um, so it was getting to the point now where the media was picking it up. All of the media seemed to be reading it, um, referring to it in their little circles, that also really started to show me how popular the site was becoming. Um, do you want me to tell? I think, you know what story that I like was one of the earliest ones was the Bill Tolan story. Is Bill here? Bill's not Which here. story? The Rob Owen, Bill Tolan story where you Oh, yeah. um, so was it the thing where WT e and PXI had the same website up? Yeah, and then they ran. Okay, it. yeah, I noticed it because I was constantly checking new sites. WTAE and, and this was early. This was really very early. early. Yeah, very maybe early. like six, three, six months. Yeah. Um, WPXI, when you clicked on a certain page of theirs, had all of WTAE's logos. <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> Wait a minute, what site am I on? So I mentioned it on my blog, and then it was like a, two days later. Um, Rob Owen was like, hey, did you guys notice this? And basically, like, he found it. So I sent him an email, all nasty, like, you know. And Rob, <laughs> Rob Owen is the entertainment, TV entertainment right. reporter like, for the you Post You know what, I know you totally took that from me. And, I, and after I sent it, I was like, well, what if he did it? Maybe he just noticed you too. Got an email the next day where he apologized and said, but Bill Tolan told me about it. Um, so they were just, you know, pointing fingers, but... Uh, I may have named him the second annoying burger, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I did. I think, I think he was like two or three Bill Tolan. I was just like, yeah, I got it out for you. Um, but that right there, too, it was just... But I think even Bill wrote about it, even to say, didn't he? Didn't he acknowledge it? He did it at acknowledge some point? that he was a former annoying burger. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so you had some of that there. So. Right. So I mean, as inertia picked up, um, you know, a, a, a lot. One of the things that we kind of talked about was she was on the blogger blogging platform, and we'll get back to that in a second because that ended up being a story unto itself. Um, we moved, we were talking about moving to a different platform and she approached me and she said, would you be interested in helping me out move to WordPress, which would allow a lot more flexibility and so on. And I said, yeah, yeah, sure. And I said, oh, by the way, I went and bought the birdblog.com, so at least you have that because it was just a typical bird, uh, it was, I think, the birdblog.blogspot.com. So we moved it over, but then, and at that point, I had to be the front man, you know, for a lot of the website stuff because at that point, I mean, if, if anything was purchased, whether it be web hosting or whether it be, you know, domains or it be anything else, I just thought I'd, I'd offer to do it because then that's one less thing that she would have to worry about and, and, and deal with. So, and it was right around that time is that is, you know, kind of the website started to establish itself more and more people started, you know, you know, getting interested. So, did you, I mean, were you getting, what kind of emails were you getting as far as like people saying they think they know you or they guessed your identity or um, that sort of thing? Not that many, I think, because I, I just don't think people wanted to bother me with it. They knew I didn't want to know if they knew. So, um, but there was one reader that was able to figure out who I was based on, what was it, Mike? Give me a text. It was, your, it was, it was, it was where you were working. Where I was working. Um, they were using, they were using a you? pretty, uh, is, is, uh, is Joe here? No? Okay, so. Okay, yeah. Joe Polk found out <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There was one person that actually did, and didn't, but didn't say anything until after you shut the blog down. Right. He was able to identify, because of some emails that you had sent, 
your workplace was using a very unique identifier that said Yeah, he sent me an email and I replied to him. And um, and I, I replied to him from my work address. So he was able, he was in the building actually, which was why he knew the name of the, so to him it made sense. Um, he was able to figure it out. A few other people, Graham thought I was a lawyer at one point. I was off base, way off base. Yeah, yeah. you're way off base on that. Um, but no, but I, most people, People didn't really email me too much until, uh, I don't want to say her name, the news anchor that was able to figure out who I was. Oh, yeah. That was the first time I saw my name on my screen, somebody looking you know, looking at me saying, I know who you are. So before we get into to that story, I mean, there, there, there are some funny anecdotes. So I mean, once we started realizing, you know, there are certain things, and this was whole about, you know, preserving the anonymity, because more than anything else, I mean, I when I, when I was working with Ginny, I mean, obviously, I was trying to do my part to make sure that her anonymity was uh, was preserved because I knew the blog would be shut down. I mean, we had many conversations about it. I mean, one of the earliest ones I said, I said, well, what happens if you're identified or you know it, it, it gets you know attributed to you that you wrote something? And she's like, it's down. I mean, that'll be it. And I knew how serious she was. So at that point, preserving it became and that and that's and I think you're right. The silhouette had something to do with it, but I think it was because because you were so. You know, very upfront about look if it if it gets discovered, that's it. And it was I don't know if maybe, you know, maybe some people interpret you know might have interpreted that as a dare or just you know that it was like oh okay you know I so what it drove was extraordinarily paranoid behavior. So I was beyond <laughs> paranoid. So so I'll give you an example. Is Jim Shireman in here? No, I just with Jim. Oh, he's got yeah he's got the baby. So so Jim, uh, for those of you who don't know, have been involved with uh, social media. For a while here in Pittsburgh, and um, uh, uh, ran runs the blog Sportsocracy uh, uh, org. He uh, started a a annual NCAA Pick'em tournament for college basketball. So Ginny and I were exchanging emails, and I said, "Are you going to do?" I happened to mention, I was like, "Are you going to do Jim's thing?" You know, I think the picks are due today or tomorrow. And she goes, "Yeah, I'm just finishing it up, and I'm just about to send it." So I, I responded, I said, "Okay." And it was like one of those things where like you lock your keys in your car and it's that second when you realize that the keys are locked in there. I get on the email, I say, do not send that email. And she goes, yeah, what the hell is your problem? Why do you, want, you know, what's the big deal? So I asked her to send me the file. In Microsoft Excel, when you save the file, it stamps your name on the file. And I didn't know Jim very well at this point. Now, now I mean, it's you know, like no big deal, but I, was, I, I said, no, you can't send it. So I had to take all the pics out, put them in another spreadsheet, and do all this so she, she, would, she would participate. And I don't know how many times you would get links to stuff, and I'm like, don't click the link, not to the post because they'll figure out who you are. Uh, yeah, he was definitely, he took keeping my identity, I mean, it was, obviously, it was important to me that nobody knew who I was, but he was above and beyond paranoid about everything. I, I mean, I always, tell, I felt like I was walking and dropping crumbs, and he was just Picking up my, <laughs> you know, like just picking up my trail. Just, um, he, bit, you know what? I was, I didn't know. I just, if you're not an internet type person, you don't know the trail you can leave online. But he knew. So every time I said I'm going to do this, he's like, you got to stop. Well, I mean, but truth be told, I mean, it was a learning experience for me as I go. I mean, my, my background's IT, but I certainly some of the things that came into you know the equation at times was, I mean, it was it was stuff that I never even you know really thought about. So. So, I mean, you know, but one of the things that was uh, obviously a very positive side effect is that we started to get to know each other and then, you know, our, our, our spouses met and, you know, we would get together and, I mean, she had a child while we were, you know, we were, we were trying to preserve all this and I had one as well and, and, I mean, it was just, I mean, it was a really crazy experience and then as, you know, things continued, continued, you know, there was more and more publicity until a day last November where kind of everything started to, to, you know, come apart so right and that, that had um, to do with me being stupid really uh, what happened was when I was on blogspot I started playing around with my header and I was new to photo back in I opened up an account called V Montanez and so my if you would have looked at behind my website you would have seen that that photo bucket picture was hosted under some user be much nice. That's how the news anchor was able to figure it out. She had a friend in California, <laughs> of all places. She, she asked her friend to, to see what she could find, I guess. Um, and that's what she was able to discover with this be much nice. So she just did, there's not very many names that we start with V. I mean, you got Victoria, Virginia, Vivian, that's about it. 
Um, so she just started doing some digging and found my bio on the NEED website. Um, and, but that was, it was my fault. I, I learned past that to open up a pit blog or wine, but I forgot that that was out there. Yeah, when we moved it over, we kept it up temporarily because we wanted people, I mean, this is years ago, so, I, you know, at that point, I don't think Blogger was doing redirects at the time. So we just left it up. We said, here's a post, go to the new page. And at some point, I knew we were going to tear it down, but then we kind of forgot all about it. And I never even bothered to look at the, at the code in the background, and it's, you know, it's like anything else. It's the thing that you least expect. That you know that there would be some reference there, and I mean, I just it, because the blog had become the destination, I you know it was surprising that anybody even checked it anymore. So, right. so then, so you get this email. I get this email from an anchor I really like, <laughs> <laughs> saying I know who you are. She um, she said this other anchor knows who you are. She, your name starts with a V. You live in Irwin. You're married and you have two children. I was like, okay, she knows who I am. Uh, maybe three seconds. I read the email a couple of times. But I just kept reading it over and over, and I was just shaking. And I emailed that guy. I said, "Nuke it." I mean, they might say, "Yeah, that take was it exactly out. it." She um, goes, I "She goes, I think I need you to take down my blog." And that yeah, was the, the and message I, I that was I got. like, "Take it down now. I, there's no waiting. Just whatever you need to do." Um, so then I called you, and right. I said, "Well, wait a second. What's you know what's you know what's the story? Trying to understand the dynamics. I mean, this is something that really was that urgent." And you know, so we kind of talked it through because there were certain things, and I'm, you know, I'm going to point to them in, in a little bit here in the presentation. There were some things that needed to be done because once we started going down the road of taking it down, if we didn't do them in the proper order, it could just it, 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 the the fact of taking it down would be negated. I mean, the benefit, it not, you know, it, it would just not have been it would not have been beneficial to her. So I said, think about it over the weekend. Let me at least start to do some things, and you know, we can kind of regroup. So one of the things that I started to do, which you can do and nobody would know unless they were actively checking for it, is I started to just systematically remove the blog from uh, search engines. So, and remove them from archive.org, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So if anybody knows anything you know, about you know, the internet and, and web history, archive.org basically takes snapshots of every website at various points in time, and it keeps a lot of the content in its archives. So, Fortunately, because Ginny wrote every day, three times a day to four times a day, Google and other web crawlers use that as a benchmark for how often they should go and crawl and update. If you don't update your blog once in every 60 days, you're probably going to wait a long time before they purge the information. Fortunately, hers was down probably by that Monday, I think. And that was one of the things that we wanted to do. The second was to make sure that we got everything down, we backed everything up. Um, she needed to write a farewell post and that sort of thing and talking through it. And I wanted her to be sure too because this was a pretty significant step. So <laughs> Yeah, there was no question. I, I didn't I, I told him I was thinking about it, but there was no question. I knew it needed to come down. I knew I was gonna get fired if it came out. I mean there was just no question in my mind. Um, plus I, I didn't want to it, I already knew there was a reader out there that knew who I was, but to know that the news media knew who I was and I was constantly sending out press releases to them. I was like, how long until they, they associate that Virginia name with that V initial that they all know? Um, plus, I'm doing events with the mayor. I'm doing events with Ken Rice. <laughs> you know, and I'm seeing Ken Rice and Harold Hayes, and I'm talking to them, and I'm just, I was like, it just got to be too much. And I knew that once these two news anchors knew, it was time. So he, I did, you know, I, I had that time to think about it, but it was really just my on the back end going crazy, taking everything down. Uh -huh. But I, I knew my decision was what I needed to do. Yeah, so I think, um, was that a Tuesday? I think it was a Tuesday. I don't, I can't remember. I thought we did yeah. it Monday, but yeah. maybe it was Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday. But by that time, they were it, all the indexes were gone because the one thing that would have been an issue is that the minute it come down, and it, and it happened, I had people come up and talk to me and say, man, I was trying to find archives because they were going to try probably find the archives and pull down all the blog posts and then start trying to see, okay, where's the smoking gun? You know, where can we find out where, you know, she, she was identified? And fortunately, we were able to negate that. Now, this is an extreme example. But you know, when you think about taking your blog down, I mean, one of the most important things you have to really be comfortable with is, do you want that content still out there? You know, there is a, you know, there there is an adage, and I and I and I, you know, sincerely believe it. You know, the once it's out on the internet, you can never count on that you can take it back. I mean, you, you know, you can't get half pregnant. But once it's out there, it's out there. <laughs> but well, maybe. <laughs> so, but, uh, but one of the things you really need to think about, it, though, is that just take as much back as you possibly can. Obviously, if people were quoting some of her posts, they're always going to be out there. But the fact that you make a very easy, you know, archive to go through and identify, you know, where things are. 
that was our goal was to really get that off there and get any references. And and I mean we also had the the complicating factor of this old blogspot blog that housed her archives for the first I think a year, year and a half, that was still sitting out there that we had to get rid of that tag. And the problem is is that blog had not been updated in I mean in years, in a year, in two years. So the crawl that was going to take to take that out of the archives for Blogspot was going to be a very long time. So what we did is we deleted it, recreated it, and put a dummy post there. And fortunately, because that was an update in and of itself, it triggered the, the crawls that remove all the information because that tag was you know, very much the, 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 that was the smoking gun in this case for exposing her identity. So, so I don't know, is there any other sort of anecdotes from that or, I mean, so you were, I mean, you, you stayed on Twitter and you stayed on a lot of the I social did. media. It was too, I, I didn't, when I shut down, I, I wanted to just, I, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to go away completely because I had so many virtual relationships with people. I didn't want to just, you know, disappear. I didn't see what would be the harm in at least staying on Twitter. Um, I occasionally ranted on Facebook. Um, I, I was taking a risk there too. I just couldn't shut up, no matter how hard I tried. <laughs> really, who was the mayor in the trash can? I was like, I have to say something. <laughs> um, I was just, and so many people emailing me saying, I want to know what you would say about this. I want to know what you would say about this. Um, it really made me miss it. It did that time I was gone. But um, and then I, I, you know, I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with how the story ends. You know, where, right. where where you were on Facebook and posted on the wrong the wrong uh, profile and then right, I, so everybody, everybody knows what I did right I posted on I signed in as Jenny Montanez but I thought I was signed in as Jane Pitt and I wrote giving someone permission to repost something about Ben Roethlisberger so it popped up saying yeah you can I give you permission and it was next to my picture and my name and I just panicked because there were maybe uh, 60 people that commented on it, and like 40 people had liked it. So I thought at the time that all those people were going to get an email notification on you know, Facebook. But so I, I signed on to Twitter an hour after this all happened, and all hell's breaking loose. <laughs> on it. And is John Carmen in here? Where's John? John comes over. I was working with him at Alpha Lab. You know, he was he was in the space, and he comes over and he goes, uh, "Have you been on Twitter today?" And I said, "Yeah, I just got on there." And he goes, "Okay, well." I just want to be in the war room. I just want to see it, <laughs> experience it. So, you know, we kind of had a conversation that night. Basically, the choice, you know, I said, you know, at this point, there's, you know, there's pretty much three options. There's the first is, is that um, you can continue, you know, going on doing what you're doing, and then, you know, it might get out, it might not. Those people that did receive email notifications, which I think there were probably five or six, will never say anything, and that'll be it, and you'll be fine. The second is, is that you wait for somebody to out you, just, you know, you know, purposefully. And then you know you're kind of stuck in, and then you're reactionary, or you get out in front of it. And the one thing I said to her is, I said, you know, I've known her a long time, and I said, talking to you, I can tell you're tired. I mean, it's just that juggling the the identity and all that stuff, and always worrying if somebody's gonna find out. I mean, that wears on you. I mean, I was just the guy, run, you know, doing some of the, you know, just the website stuff. I mean, I wasn't doing anything really, you know, uh, uh, you know, I wasn't the person out there in front. Of it. I mean, I was exhausted for, her, you know, so. And that's when you kind of said, you know, when you think about it, and then you said, we're going to you know, do this new thing and come out and so on and so forth. So, so real quick, because I, I, I want to see, you know, go to any questions that we have. We'll just breeze through a couple slides here. So, so you know, some food for thought in terms of, you know, thinking about when you're, when you're thinking about taking the blog down. The first is make sure you're sure and understand why you're taking it down. I mean, I, uh, you know, Michelle had a session earlier today about, Understanding why you're blogging in the first place very much the same sort of idea is you really should understand why you're taking it down I mean if you're like in a funk and you're just like, you know, I don't feel like it right now You know, you know, you should think about that But if you know that this is not something you want to be doing or you're taking it down because your job could be in jeopardy something like that Obviously then you, you know what you want to do uh, Let me just interrupt there and say that I would say over the course of the Three and a half four years. I was writing. I wrote a goodbye post maybe six times I remember, yeah. And I remember once I emailed you, you were like, oh, God. Um, but, <laughs> so I, yeah. I, but I, I, said that, I think I said that to you. I said, make sure you're sure, you know. If right. You're, you're, I mean, I, I literally, goodbye post, ready to go, almost hit with public. With your picture, saying, right? Hi. With yeah. my picture saying, hey, this is me. But at the time, I mean, it wasn't as big. I wouldn't have gotten fired because it would have been maybe 200 people that would have known. Um, but yeah, I 
probably six times over those four years where I'm just like, you know what, I'm gonna shut it down. So yeah, be sure. Yeah. So second is is determining is determining the best time, you know, immediately, days, weeks. Again, this was an extreme example, but it shows how not only how fast you might want to move on some of these things, but also you know some of the circumstances that come in and, and you know and some of the dynamics that come in. But I mean, if you're in no hurry, I mean, what you can do is you can actually have fun doing it. So you can do a best of series if you're saying goodbye, uh, you know, a countdown like 30 posts to go. I used to have a blog, uh, the Have a Good Sandwich blog, and when I shut it down, I did 30 posts. I just said I'm going to do 30 in a row that are just going to be fun and I'm have a good time. And then that also verified for me at least at that, that point in my life, I was I definitely was you know not it was not something that I wanted to be doing in terms of blogging. And then finally, um, you know, there's embarrassing photos. So, which I mean, you had you had a nice one recently. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. Yes. Embarrassing yes. Yes. Yeah. Don't no. Don't try to create embarrassing photos. <laughs> Mikey and Big Bob, you go to see those guys if you want to do something. Like that. So, so and don't do anything rash. <laughs> so. You know, I mean, you may feel like really emotional. You're like, oh, you know, I got to take this thing down. I don't want any part of it anymore. If you get like a, you know, uh, you know, some sort of comment that might offend you or get upset, seriously, sleep on it. I mean, that's always a great rule of thumb. You know, if you're very upset about it, wait 24 hours, even wait 48 hours, and just make sure that you don't, you know, kick your dad's car in and <laughs> knock it out of the house. <laughs> so now to the boring logistics stuff. I'll go through this very quickly. So back that thing up, which is, you know. On, on, there's two basic types of blogs, right? There's hosted blogs, which means a company does it for you, which is WordPress.com or Blogger. Their tools are dead simple to do. If you go to Tools Export or Blogger Settings, you're able to export your entire blog and have it as a file. So it's very simple, very easy to do, but it's something I think people don't think about. Or they think, you know what? I'll never, bless you. I, I'll never need to go back. I, I, I don't care about that writing. You know, I won't miss it. And then a month later, you're like, oh, I really wish I hadn't destroyed it. And then you're combing through archives that may not exist to go find it. So, and then WordPress self-hosted, I'm targeting the big ones here, but each different blogging platform has similar things, Google type, I'm sure, and so on. WordPress self-hosted, one of the things that we talked about in some of the plugin sessions is make sure you install a backup plugin, such as uh, WordPress DB plugin. And then you can also use a backup utility in cPanel. Those of you that have hosted websites or websites you're paying to host, cPanel is a very, very popular tool. And it, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a full backup and just a big button that says, I'm gonna download everything. That's your database, that's all your files and everything in one shot, and then you have a backup of it. So second is if you so choose, cover your search engine tracks. Again, it's really simple with the, uh, with the hosted websites, you know, those companies that host it for you, WordPress.com, it's under settings and privacy. And then Blogger, it's settings and search engines. And you just say, don't list them. Now, the, and, and then for WordPress, self-hosted, robots.txt file at the root with the following content. I know that's, that might sound like a lot of you know, just technical nonsense, but there's just a small text file that all you'd have to put at the root of your website, and it just has two lines. It's user-agent colon asterisk and disallow root. And what that says is, any search engine that's reputable, I don't want you crawling my website, please take me out of your archives, and that includes archive.org, which is the, the big one, and they'll remove you. But this is kind of like a cork. You can't like wait until they're all gone and then take this file off because they still actually do hold on to your data. They will still keep all that information about you, but what you're just basically saying is you're putting up a screen that says, I don't want anybody to see that information from a search engine standpoint. So, and again, um, you know, make a change on your web on your website. Use a website like pingomatic.com, which sends updates and says, "I've updated my website because that can help accelerate some of the crawl process for those search engines." And your timing for removal may vary, so your mileage may vary. If you update your website like Jenny did three times a day, you're probably going to get it removed pretty quickly. If you haven't updated in three months, it's going to take longer. So, and finally, check out each search engines, and that's Google, Bing, Yahoo's webmaster help and tools for more information. There's a lot of information about how to get pages out of their index, and so on. So, finally, pull the trigger. Verify that you are out of the search engine results. Uh, WordPress.com or Blogger, so those companies that host for you, delete the blog and recreate it with an empty shell. That way, you know, nobody can go and co-opt your blog URL and like start, you know, somebody would have taken over the birdblog.com and started putting up nonsense and trying to just basically take traffic away. So you want to recreate it with an empty shell and still hang on to it. And for self-hosted websites, remove all the files and replace it with your own placeholder web page, which was like the goodbye page that she had. So final thoughts. So whatever the reason, stop blogging when it's no longer right. 
<laughs> back up what you've written, you may regret it later. And I think the final word is you can always come back. <laughs> so, so if there's any closing we'll writing questions, you can ask Jason, I think I saw you first, so right. if you don't mind handing the mic on. No, no, no. Back, so. Jenny, big fan. Oh, uh, I'm a big fan of you. Thank you, thank you. Um, I have a question. This kind of ties into a presentation I'm doing tomorrow, but it's about your anonymity. And did you feel like your anonymity kind of changed your voice at all, and emboldened you in any way, that then, like a rolling snowball effect where the more you took advantage of your anonymity, the more you needed it, if that makes sense. I know it did. If you go back and look, uh, there's a post I wrote about Elsie and Hen Henry Hillman. Um, and at the time, I was only maybe a couple months old. And I was very, I was very careful to not offend them because they were donors to the organization I was working at. Three years later, I would have been all over them. <laughs> like, screw you. You know, I would have cared. So definitely, um, I don't know if that's a good thing. I mean, it got me in trouble, obviously. I was more cautious in the beginning. If you go back and look to the people that were associated with me in any way outside of the blog, um, I, I was very careful. So yeah, it made me very brave, very brave. Another question, oh, behind you there, Jason. Hi, I've got a great blog. Um, I wanted to ask why, um, why you, uh, keep the, the anchor that sent you the email anonymous because anchors aren't usually news anchors aren't usually anonymous and What the, did the anchor that? Uh, con contacted you threaten to reveal your identity if or did she just want you to Thank know? You hey, I know who you are and that's all because that doesn't sound like a news media oh, person yeah. just, uh, They begged me not to shut it down. They were they were crying um, Yeah, There was no blackmail or anything not like at all. Like they that. It, it was complete opposite. I said, you know, um, don't get upset, but I'm going to close the blog down. And it was just eight emails a day. Oh, my God, no. I think partially fear for themselves that I was going to say it was them. Um, and people would look at them in a different way. But you know, I was not threatened, but I, at the same time, I knew she was leaking information. How did people know my name was V? How did they know I was married with two children? Um, so, but they never, they never threatened me. They, they did the opposite. They promised me they would not reveal my identity. And to this day, they tell me they have not. Um, so. Would they wanted to interview you anonymously, or? They, they well, to let they, you know they, they consta I constantly got asked for interviews. Um, and when I did, when I shut down, they asked me if they could interview me. And when I started back up, um, but my. I mean, I just say no to everything. Mm -hmm. Really, I did a gym okay. I said yes, you know. But um, you know, I, I just and, and part of that is saying no to the radio, saying no to the TV. So again, it's getting there in front of people. Am I going to hear the question? Am I going? That's why I'm just going to say no to everything. Um, but no, they they did ask for interviews, so I just turned it down. Oh. Jonathan, Jonathan you, would you pass that over? Thanks. Hi Jenny, I'm a big Hi. fan, you know, yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, two things, can you talk about what it was like seeing yourself on the front page of CNN.com, and also, um, <laughs> how does writing now uh, on your blog and on, in monthly in Pittsburgh Magazine, by the way, uh, feel different than it did when you were anonymous? Uh, let me just, the, the first thing, CNN.com. That was an awful day. I, I know that people want to believe that I enjoyed that attention, and I promise you, I hated every second of it. Um, freaking out to Mike, freaking out to my husband. Um, I was just walking around the whole top floor of my house like that, like, oh, they have to take it down. And the reason was I was afraid of the negative press that was going to go toward my employer because I was okay with what they did. And I knew that by my face being up there, and the, the CNN reporter didn't say all the stuff I said. I said I was okay with it. I said I understood their decision. I said maybe if I was on the board, I would have made that same decision. I was okay with being fired. That didn't make it. So it made it kind of like this soap opera story. She got fired, she said she had a job. So, you know, it was awful. Emails, hundreds and hundreds of emails from all over the world. Weirdest job offers you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like? Just like? Yeah. 
Yeah, actually, I'm not privy to some of these. Just bizarre stuff. And, and even the smallest job options, people are like, you could be a paralegal in my firm. I was like, I want to do this. Um, but it was, CNN was a really bad day for me. It was awful. Um, I was so happy when it came up, when it was taken down. I wasn't expecting it. And when I was interviewed for that article, they told me I was being interviewed to just as a, to give a quote on another story. It wasn't even supposed to be about me. So when I click on, remember Bird Baby Michelle, she was like, oh, look, there's Jenny on CNN. I was like, what is she talking about? freaked me out because it wasn't expected. It wasn't what I signed up for when I said yes to that interview. So I mean, that was a, that was like a perfect storm of just timing because I think there had been, you know, as part and parcel that that article was, you know, several bloggers that had been, you know, anonymously, you know, either fired or so on and so forth, and they chose you as the lead. Which I would, she said, she goes, well, do you think it's going to get better by tomorrow? And this was the day before. I said, yeah. I'd say you got another 24 hours, 36 tomorrow. hours, it'll be okay. <laughs> I'd send him an email like, this is going to get better. Well, and then I'm better. driving the Erie, and I'm like, this this headline is creeping up, CNN.com's front page. I said, I wouldn't be surprised if I get to Erie, and it's and it's on the front page, and then sure enough, there it is. So I think it was it was just a bad set of circumstances. It was bad. It was a really bad day. Uh, I didn't hear the second so part of his question. How does it, how now? What was the it, writing, Jonathan? Writing, how does how it it writing under your real name, how does it feel different than writing yeah. anonymously? Writing now, how is it different than before? Um, well, I have to be a little bit more reputable when it comes to writing for the magazine. You know, it's forcing me to get my humor across without having a potty mouth. <laughs> and really, I rely on my potty mouth. <laughs> so the one thing I've learned with the magazine is how can I still be funny and, and push that a little bit, you know, in, in a way that it's okay for the magazine. Um, yeah, stuff gets cut, but not for it not being, you know, because I'm pushing an envelope of some sort. It's just for space. So um, for the magazine side, that has been a really big learning experience for me. And I've really enjoyed it to find that I could still convey some humor without being 12 years old. You know? yeah. <laughs> um, and as for the blog, the only thing I think that's changed is, and I mean, you guys might have a different opinion on it, I just don't have the time as much now because I've got a two-year-old. And I can't write like I used to before. And here's something else you might not have known was I didn't have a regular nine to five job. So I was able to write and be so prolific. I worked a lot from home. I worked in the office in the morning, I was downtown, and then I came home. So now I'm home all the time and I have a two year old. And I was telling you guys, remember? Yeah. I'll be sitting at my computer and I'll put like some blocks. Not to get a mommy blog around, you know, after taking wrong with that. But, and I was like, okay, I can write something and then I'll just hear her. I <laughs> 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 can't do anything. Um, so that is, I'm trying to find more time to write. But other than that, I'm trying to stay true to what I was before. Um, but I don't know if I'm doing a good job of it or not. We have Kim over here. So. Nap time. Nap time. She nap? Yeah, she does, but I mean, that's, when I, that's why I don't write until the afternoon now. Yeah. You know, if I'm lucky, I get something in. Yeah, that's true. And your blog for the weekends and stuff. I met you in Michelle's terrific session. Um, I noticed when you launched um, the new blog that it was really close to time for the opening of your husband's restaurant. Did that bother you? Were you really concerned about that at all, that it was going to be an issue or that he was going to in any way affect? Did open, did bring the starting blog back up and revealing your identity so close to your husband's restaurants. I got some I got some criticism for that. But you know what, um, when I was talking to Mike for those two hours that one night when I was trying to decide, you know, am I ready to do this? Um, you know, he brought it up, you know, this could be good for your husband's restaurant, if you think about it. And to me, that helped me make my decision, because I'll do anything for him. And I'll do anything, and considering I'm about to lose my job, <laughs> I better help him. So it, I knew I wanted to be out. I was ready for it. I was so tired. And I thought, well, maybe I can use this publicity to generate some business for him so he can pay himself a little extra to make up for what we're going to lose when I get fired. What was his reaction when you said, you know what, honey, I'm going to probably get fired, but I really want to, this is really important to me. I mean, how, was that a difficult? What was his reaction? When My husband? That? Yeah. My husband, you got to understand something about him. He, if I were to come home and say my boss bothered me today, he would say quit. <laughs> and I'm not even, I mean, I'm dead serious. That's how he is. He just, I, 
I think it's that Mexican in him, he's just like, screw it, there's other job. So he never has come to me and said, you know, it, the only time he would come to me is if he would read something that he didn't like that a guy said. You know what I mean? Um, but otherwise, he was just like, yeah, do it, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> whatever you want to do. Um, I said, you know, what if the mayor comes after you? And he's like, I don't care. It's just, you know, he just does not care. He's always been supportive. And I know you had that. Oh, yeah. Mike's knows yeah. him. He, yeah. He's no, he's a great, I mean, he's a great guy. I mean, uh, the only thing that made me a little uncomfortable is I knew, I knew that, I mean, I didn't know your name, but I knew that she was blogging and creating the bird blog, and her husband had no idea. That was right. a little yeah. weird. Yeah. 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 So, I, think I would ask her every once in a while, does, does, does your husband know you? Yeah. <laughs> then she sent me an email one day. She's like, oh, I told him. Yeah, I think um, I remember when we were driving, and he was like, what the crap's the blog? He didn't care. <laughs> like, I just want you to know that I have this thing, and it's in the paper sometimes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. I was like, oh, I have this blog. You know, they've been picking me up a little more, and so then he was like, "Oh," but um, you know, he's not a reader. <laughs> he doesn't read it. He occasionally he reads the Steelers post. And that's about it. You know, he just doesn't care. He's like, Whatever you want to do with your life is fine with me. So, there you go. I might be able to hear you. You're in rogue too. I think this actually builds upon the Steelers comment. Back a while ago, I'm sure you all remember when Steely McBean got arrested for the DUI. <laughs> uh, the guy that did get arrested was a really good friend of mine. And I think this is more like a comment more than anything. As fans of the blog, we we try to remain anonymous ourselves. Right. And with like our names we create in the comments and all that stuff. So I sent this story to her. I'm like, I got some news for you. <laughs> Steely McBean got a DUI. And I gave her all the details, and I also gave you some information on how much money he was making. Which was a lot, yeah. So, I said that to you, and it went on this blog. And, you know, like, my group, my group of friends, they really don't, they're not really into social media. And uh, the guy was still working for the Steelers, he wasn't kicked off or anything like that. He got a phone call, I think, within maybe 10 minutes of that going on your page. And like, I don't know who you need to tell this to, but you need to tell your friend to tell that person to get that off of their blog right now. I took it down, right? Right, yeah. right, because I sent you the email. I'm like, Steelers are pissed. You're mad at him. He's mad at me. My name is out there with this. I'm going to get killed. <laughs> so, Leo did I. I said, read your Leo. Yeah, said, yeah. Yeah, I said, read your. I'm like, okay, how many Leos are pissed? Right. <laughs> so but, so I, it's more like a comment with anything. As fans, when you bring us into that world that you have, at the time of being anonymous, it's scary for us because, like you said earlier, someone pointed me out. It's it's just interesting because when, when you put us into there, we have to be careful of ourselves, we have to be careful of what we do. Because, you know, I have a job, my employer sees that, they're going to go, okay, why is Leo surfing the internet all day and not doing his nice. work? <laughs> <laughs> We're all doing work, right? Yeah, yeah we are. Exactly. All day. So, well, I mean, I want to comment on that. What was, what was really hard for me is that. You know, again, while I, I tried to help Ginny on, on a lot of the back end stuff, I mean, it was, I was, I was always so concerned about, you know, the job aspect. And then when she sent me the message, you know, very early in the morning, the, was that the, the, the few days after, um, everything happened two days after, when she said she was let go, I mean, I was just sick. You know, I felt really just awful because I think, and that's, and that's, Part of that is the proximity of the situation, but I think a lot of people felt that way, where it was like, you know, you live this experience with somebody who talks about it online, and you know, this is a daily, daily struggle, and, and I think that, you know, kind of, you, you start, when you see windows of that sort of, you know, uh, uh, you know, dynamics that she had to deal with, I mean, it was, it was hard, you know, so. Um, when it's, Tim Loki just distracted me, I can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> he opened his mouth to show me food. He's eating. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Um, Interesting you mentioned that about sometimes uh, the people that I talk about on my website. Um, Zober, talked to him this week, he said that people are coming up to him, recognizing him. People on the street are saying, are you really going to meet her this week? You know, it was, so when, when people that were just commenting were saying that just by commenting, things were happening, you know, it's a small taste of what it was like for me. It really was. It was, it was a scary thing. Any other yeah. question, Norm? 
Are we here till four? I mean, yeah, we got another hour. I just called some people. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I just want to know. I mean, what, I know we're running out of time, but what's so? What's next for you? I mean, are you going to do that stretch for a while, or do you have any other cool ideas? Guys, exactly. What are you going to do now? I don't know. Um, there have been some interesting offers that I have turned down, um, uh, just because the cost to me was too great. I wasn't prepared for what they they wanted me to do. Um, Honestly, my life has been getting that restaurant up, and I just have not had any time to really think about what I want to do. I've, I'm enjoying writing. I love writing for the magazine. I'm having so much fun doing that. Obviously, now that the restaurant is open, it's time for me to look back at myself and say, what do you want to do? I, I don't know. I just don't know. Um, I, I want to write. I want to keep writing. And if it means that I'm going to have, but in order to write and keep my blog, if that means I have to go out and get a regular job to help support the family, I, I'm willing to do whatever I need to. I'm just not willing to lose my blog, if that makes sense. Um, so that's why I want to do with some people. I just, um, I don't want to be looked at as a sellout. So, but I don't know what's next. And you keep asking me that, and I still don't know. I'm going to know next week. And, and, and tell Loki to, to get off the shed. <laughs> <laughs> Bram, yes. Hi, thanks. Uh, first, I just wanted to clarify that that one day when I suggested you might be that lawyer. Yeah, Laura something. I actually knew that you weren't that lawyer, but oh, I was trying okay. to throw other people off the track and do you a favor. I, okay. okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, it was an immigration lawyer because I picked up a comment that someone had said that someone accused you of being anti-Mexican. Yes, how hilarious! <laughs> said, if you knew what I did for a living, Wait, somebody's white. I, I know all these readers. He said, I said something about a Mexican soccer game in America. And I was joking that most of the fans were Mexican. There weren't very many Americans. And he accused me of being anti Mexican. At the time, I was married to a Mexican. <laughs> and then there was the, but also the one, real quick, the woman that um, was, when I said I didn't support breastfeeding in restaurants, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I, <laughs> Um, she said, well, you you just don't understand because you're not a mom. <laughs> 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 oh, I thought Seriously. Well, what's your question? My question is, uh, and I know that you're not doing this for the fame and the headlines and all that stuff. Right. But I notice every time that you're in the paper or in a magazine, there's a chorus of some people who come out afterwards going, I can't believe that a blogger is in the newspaper. It's yeah. what, What's the world come... Like, and I try to figure out, why do you think that gets that reaction from some people? Just what I do you think, think of it? I think it's threatening. I think it's threatening a little bit. Plus, um, I'm not a trained journalist. And these people, I, I admire them because people in the newspaper industry, number one, I mean, if they're in here, I feel bad, but you're kind of like on a sinking ship a little bit and trying to keep it afloat. And I talked to the other post said about that, about you know, how do you keep it and I've been inside the Post Gazette building, and I'm only saying that because I know the rumor was out that I was in that building. And very nice people, but I just think that maybe when you've worked your whole life to be a journalist and to see somebody, think, you know, a blogger come in and have a following and to maybe have a way with words, I understand not welcoming them with open arms. I, I can understand where they're coming from. I just think it's, it's the the newspaper industry where it is right now being so fragile and being on that boat and knowing how fragile it is knowing it might be going down so you think it's mostly journalists staying anonymous and making those kind of comments because sometimes it's just you know when it's an article about you you know how popular you are then they'll just i, I don't you know what i don't i've never really heard a lot of people say that about i've never heard that backlash well i follow your fans maybe closer than you follow you know? <laughs> i just you know i mean I, I've never really, the most of the backlash I'm hearing comes straight to me, but I've never really heard the backlash of getting upset if, other than Chris Potter, you know, he doesn't like it that the post that refers to me <laughs> too much or whatever, but yeah, he does, well no, he's, he wrote about it, it's like, I, I can, they should be paying her or something, but, um, any other questions? Yeah, I can hear you, you're right there. One word answer. What's the name of the restaurant? Las Vegas. It means the candles in Spanish. Kind of like Las Vegas. I figured I could find online if I did a bit of digging, but I figured I'd save myself. It's, the time. Yeah, it's uh, there's a location and everything. Thanks. Great food.
Yes. Great food. Yes. Great desserts. All right, we're good. Uh, we have to close them. One more What's minute. That? One more. One more question. Anybody? Justine has joined us, by the way. Uh, for Justine, I love her. Good to see you. So, any other questions? Just hang on. Oh, yes. sure. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, is there a place where you keep, like, the old mastheads of, like, the bird walk through the ages? I have access to them. That you mean, like, the headers? Like, a retrospective. Yeah, because yeah. oh, like, uh, I, 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 yeah. I think it might have been the first one. It had, like, the city in the background. It was black with the silhouette. Just on no, the, the first, the, well, the, the, a the city first? silhouette, there was no, there was well, no, no the city girl. was in the background, yeah. and then it had, had the pit girl That was silhouette. like the second or first. That's the second one. The first one was just the name, and then I changed it so that the font was different, you know, getting all fancy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one that got in trouble, and then That's when we the moved first it. one, you know, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> when we moved it was the silhouette. Yeah. So, but, um, yeah, that's anyway. him. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. For